Hi, I'm Phyllis Lang and welcome to Nightwear. Today's webinar addresses the problem of double star designations. A user of Deep Sky Planner sent in a question, so the goal of this webinar is to answer that question and to offer some tips to all users on how to search for double stars most effectively with Deep Sky Planner. Uh, you'll notice today that we have the live Q&A feature turned on uh, in the Google webinar event. In order to participate in that, you need to be logged into your Google Plus account and you need to be watching from the Google Plus webinar event page. And if you're doing all those things correctly, you should see Q&A over on the right side of the screen. You can click ask a question, type your question into the box and, and click submit and that will send the question to me and I'll try to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. So with that, let's move on to the question of the day and this one was submitted by Henry from New Mexico. And Henry is saying that he tried to add Epsilon Lyrae to an observing plan. Deep Sky Planner could not find it as WDS designation or CCDM designation as it appears in Simbad. What am I doing wrong? Well, Henry, you're probably not doing too much wrong. There are such a wide variety of ways to express the designation of a double star. So let's get started with an observing plan document, which is, I assume, what you were doing. And we were probably adding an object and using the lookup feature in the observing plan object editor. So Henry mentioned that he might have looked for Epsilon, Lyrae, oops, and uh, right away I can tell you, Henry, that probably isn't going to work. And that's because in Deep Sky Planner, we don't use the full genitive form of the constellation in a Bayer designation. We use the IU recommended constellation abbreviation. So given that, we should perhaps start with Epsilon LYR. Now the other thing that I know is that there are two catalogs in Deep Sky Planner's database. One is the Washington Double Star Catalog, WDS, and one is the CCDM. Now the difference between the two is that the WDS has entries that describe a pair of stars. The CCDM describes a single component in a system. So in a system like Epsilon Lyrae, there are multiple uh, components in that system and in fact multiple pairs. So for that reason uh, there isn't an entry found for Epsilon LYR. So what we would probably do is add the wildcard character here so that all the, uh, the pairs uh, with the name Epsilon something LYR will be found. So remember to use the uh, asterisk wildcard character. And that search does turn up several matches. Well, I suspect that this is the one that you were looking for, Henry. Um, if you click that match, then all the information is transferred and you can enter it into your observing plan. Now, uh, the other option that Henry offered was using the CCDM identifier and the WDS identifier. So given that, I'll grab the uh, WDS identifier that Henry submitted to me and there are a couple of things that I can see offhand with this. Now Henry said that he looked for this identifier because it showed up uh, in Simbad. So the first thing we need to do is understand this J character. The J character that precedes the location portion of the designation 
specifies in Simbad that it's a, a Epic J2000 location. Now since the WDS catalog that appears in Deep Sky Planner's database is, uh, it was brought in directly from the U.S. Naval Observatory catalog. We don't need the J. It doesn't appear there in the catalog from the U.S. Naval Observatory. So we need to get rid of that. That's simply uh, a signal to the Simbad search system. So uh, the other thing I can see that's a problem with this particular format is that the WDS catalog describes pairs. This designation is describing a single component in a, compare, in a pair. So probably we would need another component specified to come up with a match in the catalog. So if I type A and B and look that up, it is found. Okay, so the other thing that Henry brought up was that he searched using a CCDM designation and I'll grab that here and paste it in. So in looking at that designation, uh, I can see that the J character is present again and it needs to be removed for the same reason that it was removed from WDS. And that is that the Deep Sky Planner database doesn't include the J because the J isn't included in the original CCDM catalog taken from CDS. It's a signal to the Simbad search system and it's not appropriate for Deep Sky Planner. So once I get rid of the J character, I can see the designation and it ends with a single component A character, which is okay for CCDM because the entries in that catalog are single components. So if we try to find that, it is found, the information is transferred and we could transfer that to our observing plan. So given that, if you, if you use these two techniques to search with the lookup feature in the observing plan report, you still may not find what you're looking for. And in that case, I would recommend using the star search document because it offers so many more search capabilities. So Going back to Henry's example, we could use a common name search for a Bayer designation. I'll type that in, and I'm going to use that wildcard character once again to search. And the search turns up the same pair. Now, if this has satisfied your, your requirement, then I would recommend that you uh, copy, uh, drag and drop the components that you wish to observe. Let's suppose that you're interested in this one. You can drag it over to your, to your observing plan report and drop it. And that's a great technique to use. In fact, uh, when I am transcribing observing plans from articles that are either online or in print, and every month that would include uh, Sue French's column in Sky and Telescope called Deep Sky Wonders. It would include Phil Harrington's Binocular Universe column in CloudyNights.com. And it would also include Pete Lawrence's Deep Sky Tour column in Sky at Night magazine. Oftentimes, any of these articles might have a double star designation in it. And the lookup feature in the observing plan report just isn't sufficient to find it. So I'll oftentimes use the star search report. Now, uh, we've looked for the Bayer designation. If the, uh, the star listed in one of these articles isn't a Bayer form, perhaps we we'll go back to the WDS form. And again, we need to uh, get rid of the J. And also, in this particular search, we already know which catalog we're searching. So we can get rid of WDS. We already know that we're not looking for a single component. So now we've gotten down to just the location portion of the designation. 
And for this report, uh, this search, it would be wise to put the wildcard character because there may be other components uh, that weren't exposed by the lookup feature. So indeed, uh, using the wildcard character, searching the WDS catalog for that form of the designation, we found 15 objects. And generally, uh, when you're looking through uh, a set of objects like this to drag and drop into your observing plan, there are a number of things in this report that allow you to focus in on the object pair that you want. Um, we have the RA and declination listed, we have common names listed, and we have separation and position angle listed. One other thing about identifiers is that Deep Sky Planner uses the IDS code uh, format and in the common names column. And oftentimes in an article or a book, you'll find something like a Struve identifier. And the format of that is often a, a Greek letter, like a capital sigma, followed by a number. Now, Deep Sky Planner doesn't use uh, Greek letters. Instead, it uses the IDS codes. And if you want to look up the IDS codes, they're available in the help file, in the appendix, and down in the IDS codes topic. You can click on the, uh, the first letter of the identifier, scroll down, and find the correct IDS code and whose list it was. In this case, those STF identifiers were FGW Strube. So, um, you, can, you can look for these IDS code style uh, designations by clicking common name and putting them in here. One other thing, Henry, that might help you to discern which of these many pairs is the pair for you is you need to look at these ephemeral items, the separation and the position angle. Now, the WDS catalog includes this information, and it usually includes them with the year of the measurement. So they're ephemeral items, but they're fixed in the catalog according to the most recent measurement available in the catalog, except for when you see an entry like this one. Some well-studied binaries have orbital elements uh, that are known and published, and Deep Sky Planner has these in its database. So when Deep Sky Planner encounters a system that has uh, orbital elements present, it'll go ahead and calculate uh, the separation and position angle that are accurate for the time of the report. Now the time of the report, of course, is specified on the ephemeris date page, and you can select any date and time and when you run the report, it will generate a correct ephemeris for the time, which is specified in decimal years, calculate the separation and position angle. It also gives an indication of how reliable that uh, ephemeris is. And the grade of these orbital elements is preliminary. If you go back to the help file and you look at the star report uh, topic page, you'll see that the grades are listed there in a description of what they mean. So in, the, uh, in this search, uh, in the area of Epsilon Lyrae, you'll see that there are two stars that have high accuracy ephemerides present. So there's one last trick you might use, and I sometimes have to use this one. And that is that when, when an article lists uh, double stars, it'll often give you the constellation, it will give you the uh, equatorial position, sometimes it'll give you the separation, position, angle, and magnitude. So we can use all of those things together to determine exactly which pair is being described. So sometimes I will search the entire WDS by the given uh, constellation, and I'll look through that data, sorting by right ascension, and I'll scroll down 
to the position of the star being described in the article or book or what have you. And um, it looks like the ones that we've been talking about uh, in the Epsilon Lyrae system are around 1844-20. So we can scroll through here and once again, once we find the one that we're interested in, we can click, drag, and drop into our observing plan. So those are the several ways that, that I've found useful in looking up double star designations in Deep Sky Planner. Double star designations are really tricky because they have so many different formats. Uh, Deep Sky Planner has a, a designation matching engine in it. It will find many, not all, formats of the designation. So using the tricks that I've shown here today, I hope that you'll be able to find the double stars that you're looking for more effectively. So with that said, let me switch back uh, to the Q&A page and see if we have any questions. And I don't see any today. It is the middle of summer and I'm sure many of you are on vacation someplace enjoying yourselves in the good weather. So with that, I'd like to thank Henry for submitting the question and I'd like to thank those of you who watched and we'll see you next time on another Deep Sky Planner Q&A webinar.